Hello scrappers. Well today we're going to do something a little different. Uh, I've got some uh, consumer electronics up on the autopsy table here. You know me, I normally do like computers, uh, telecom equipment, that kind of thing, but uh, well, every once in a while I just get the com consumer grade stuff. Just uh, I got a, uh, a DVD and VHS player down here in Emerson. Not sure what the model number on it is. And then I've got a JVC XV BP11 Blu ray disc player. And, uh, well, they're just taking up space in my uh, workshop, so they got to get scrapped out. Might as well have a look inside and see if there's anything valuable in them. I know I'm not going to get as much gold and precious metals out of these as I would get out of uh, a nice piece of telecom equipment or a couple computers, but, uh, We'll give it a look. We'll give it the old college try and see what they got in them. Take a look around. We got some uh, front panel controls here on both units. Just a few buttons. Not much. So not not much going on in the front, and probably not much going on in the back. Yeah, lots of RCA jacks. Uh, got some uh, coax connectors. Lots of RCA connectors, power connectors. That's about it. This should probably be a pretty quick scrap out. So uh, I, I'm not expecting to find a lot in these. Let me get the uh, camera up on the tripod and we'll get started. Okay, I guess we'll start with this Emerson DVD VHS player unit here. Just a few screws holding the case on. Try and stay in frame. Sometimes I drift out. Let's see. Okay, how's this gonna come off now? Oh, it's got screws on the sides too. Okay, screws on the sides. What got me thinking about scrapping these out, to tell the truth. My mom is in a uh, assisted living facility now for memory care. She has Alzheimer's. And um, I was sorting through some of her stuff yesterday, clearing out her old room, and uh, putting together a batch of stuff I need to take over to her. I found her old Blockbuster card. I thought, wow, Blockbuster. It's been a quite a few years since I was in a Blockbuster. Are they even still around? I had to Google it to find out. I was like, no, they're not still around. And a lot of younger folks watching this video probably didn't even know what Blockbuster used to do. You could go there and you could rent VHS tapes to watch them at home. And later, rent DVDs. But of course, everybody just streams now. So uh, Blockbuster kind of went out of business. Well, they were bought by, I guess, Dish Network, but there really are no blockbusters left anymore. You know, they were kind of doubly doomed. They were brick and mortar, plus they were in a business that was replaced by streaming. So, okay, so right off, I don't see a whole lot of especially good stuff. I know that uh, VCRs had a lot of precision engineering in the tape drive mechanism in the read-write head here. But uh, it's a pretty obsolete technology these days. And there's really not a lot of precious metals here. There's some copper coils. There's probably some magnets in here. There may be an encoder. I don't know. I'll look when I get a little further into it. And then we've got the DVD drive here, which has basically the same electronics as you get on a DVD drive in uh, like a, a computer. Not a whole lot. So, uh, let me take this board out. Uh, these ribbon cables are not gold-plated. Sometimes in computers they are. But in this unit they are not. Gold plating is always a bonus when you can get it. I will take this board. It's got ICs on it. It's a nice double-sided board. Great big flat pack on that side. It's like maybe memory there. Sure, what that one is. 
That's some kind of driver. The fat legs on it for current. Probably motor driver. I'll keep that depopulate it. Put it with my uh, other boards to depopulate. Let's see. How do we get further into this thing? Just like... Maybe if I take the front panel off, that out of the way. Yep, so I was looking at Mom's Blockbuster card thinking, well, I've got this old VCR and uh, Blu-ray player that ain't doing anything. Might as well clear out some space. Scrap them out, see if there's anything good in it. There we go. That's just plastic for the recycling there. Okay, well, there's another circuit board in here. Brown is never a good sign. Usually brown boards are pretty low grade, without a lot of uh, precious metal. Well, we'll go ahead with the scrap out and see what we get. Let's see. There are not any other screws to take out. Well, I take it back. There's a few back here. Maybe that'll help loosen stuff up. So, you know, a lot of people don't have access to the telecom grade equipment. But, uh, you know, if you're a scrapper, you're liable to see these beside the road any good day of the week on trash day. So, let's see what's inside. Oh, there's a few more screws I missed, actually. What are those holding in? I don't know. I'll take them out. Let's see. I take out all the screws I can see. Hopefully the thing will come apart. Of course, not always the case. I think I was taking apart a switch from a power supply from a switch a few videos back. And I took out all the visible screws and the darn thing still wouldn't come apart. Like, holy cow, to put that thing together. Okay, we got some uh, power supply electronics here. Very low grade board by the looks of it. Got some line filtering, a little transformer, a power transistor, a couple other transistors, some diodes. Let me get it out of this plastic housing. Really, not a whole lot of good stuff. This is steel, by the way. So, I was hoping it was aluminum. Because it seemed kind of light, but now that I've got this off of it, I can see it's actually steel. Alright, so there's the power supply board. Got some transistors on it. Big power transistors, some smaller signal transistors, some diodes. Um, power diodes, too. Uh, it's input filtering, some sort of transformer. So there's probably a switching power supply right here to supply low voltage efficiently to the rest of the electronics. There's really nothing on this board I want, but I might clip the transistors off. I'm doing a video on where to find the gold in electronic scrap, and it's going to be a series of videos, actually, and the first video in the series is going to be on transistors. That'll be coming out soon. Watch for it. And uh, I'll explain all about transistors and why I collect them and uh, how much gold's in them, that sort of thing. So we got this low-grade low board and a power cord. So... A little bit of copper there. And more plastic for the recycling. Okay, boy, there's still a lot of screws to take out here. Uh, see if we can get this uh, ECR hardware out of here. Be a lot of screws holding it in. There's 
more steel. Okay, what's still holding it? It's a good question. I don't really see what's still holding it. Uh oh. Oh. Looks like there's some um, steel standoffs there that go through. No, we don't. What in the world is still holding this thing? Oh, there's a screw I missed. Way down there. Underneath a doohickey. I don't know what that was. That must be like a, uh, a cleaner for either the tape or the read write head. But it was positioned itself right over the top of the screw where I couldn't see it. How many other screws are there that I missed because they're under something? Oh, must have missed at least one or two more. It is not coming out. Hmm. I'm going to go all Incredible Hulk on it and just rip it out because there might be some interesting mechanisms here. But I'm not seeing anything holding it down. Hmm. Very strange. Well, let me take some other stuff off and we'll come back to this. Maybe enlightenment will occur as I continue taking it apart. So here's the DVD player part. Again, very simple, similar. You know what? That is gold-plated, that one. It's only gold-plated on one side. Okay. Okay, so that's a bit of a bonus. That's gold-plated. Let's see these other ones. No, no gold plating on that. No gold plating on that. No, no gold plating there. And that one there is a solder termination, so there's no gold plating there either. But it's weird, the one that went to the read write head for the DVD, it was gold plated on one side but not the other. Okay. We got a slight bonus. So, if you can get a whole ton of these uh, DVD players, reader, writers from computers, there's generally some gold in here on the uh, laser diode. And in this case, there's going to be a little bit of gold in the connector where the ribbon cable went. So it takes a lot of disassembly to get at it. And there's not much gold. So in this case, I'm not even going to bother going after it. I don't think. I don't think. I don't know. I got so much junk as it is and I'm such a pack rat. I'm kind of tempted to just pull out the uh, the laser diode just to play with. Because they can be quite powerful in these Blu-ray players. I'll think about it. My wife, if she's watching this video, is going, No! Throw it away! Don't keep it! Uh, but I'll think about it. We'll see. So, what did that uncover? Well, oh, okay. I see now that there are screws from the bottom of this brown board holding this on. So that means I gotta get this brown board off to get this off. So, what's holding the brown board on? Well, here's a screw. And there's a screw. Well, actually, no, that screw is not holding the brown board on. There's a screw or two over here. Ah! Now we're making progress. Okay. Okay. So, we got some front panel buttons here. And I'm not sure what actuates these buttons. Maybe is the door opened and closed? I don't know. But these cables got to be cut to get this board out of here. And this cable too. Oh, okay. 
So brown is usually a bad color for PC boards. They don't have a lot of good stuff on them. But look, it's green on the other side. And we got some flat packs and some surface mount ICs. Not a lot of them, but a few. Some um, tantalum capacitors. And not a whole lot of stuff, but a few things. So okay, not a terrible board after all. Let's see about this chassis here. Okay. So we got a couple little boards with little tiny switches on them, and this board here has like four different switches on them and an LED. I actually have a use for some little, um, are they surface mount or through hole? They are through hole, cool. I actually have a use for some of these little through hole push button switches. Getting back into retro computing, well, getting into retro computing, I wouldn't say back into it, back when I was playing around with Z80s and 8080s and 8085s. It wasn't called retro computing. It was cutting edge stuff. Yeah, I'm that old, believe it or not. So I'm getting into retro computing and I'm building a little Z80 retro computer. And I need some push buttons. Reset buttons, buttons for changing modes, whatnot. So, okay, well, there's a couple things knocked off the parts list I need for it. All right, there's nothing else here. Some plastic and some steel. This can all go into recycling. That's my that's my gold-plated uh, ribbon cable. That can go over here where it doesn't get lost. So, let's see. We're getting down to the nitty-gritty. There's some interesting parts here. Um, got the, the little motor that drives the, the read-write head. It's kind of neat. And then it looks like there's a, a similar motor down underneath, which... You see, just barely see it back there that, that must drive the tape. So, it's a brushless DC motor. Let's see if we can get this apart a little more. Aha! Uh -huh. Yeah. So we've got a lot of uh, cables connecting the mechanism to the board, which I will just cut. Okay. All right, so here's the board. So the brown side of the board has a fair number of transistors on it, a few LEDs, some more push buttons. There's some more LEDs over here. One IC chip, crystal, Ooh, 3.579545. That's a very useful crystal. That frequency right there. That, that's for creating um, video timing, among other things. Also baud rates. So we got pr probably infrared LED up here, and another one over here. I imagine they measured tape. Uh, they're probably looking for the leader on the tape, I would imagine. Boy, there's a lot of transistors on this board. A lot of transistors. Good. I will depopulate this board with my other boards I depopulate and get those transistors off. And I'll get the a few IC chips on it off. The LEDs. LEDs have a little bit of gold in them, too. Every LED has a little whisker of gold. Um, not a lot of other useful stuff. There's a few diodes. And all these RCA connectors, which I really don't think I have a use for. So, but okay, this board will get depopulated. This board will get depopulated. They'll go with my depopulation. Uh, they'll go on my pile for of boards to depopulate. So, is there anything on this unit I really, really want? This is a very large diameter brushless DC motor there, which is kind of interesting just in and of itself, being so large. Do I have a use for it? Probably not. Do I have space to store it? Probably not. Do I have time to reverse engineer it? Probably not. Am I interested in it anyway? Yeah. There's also another little circuit board here. It looks like it's got some sort of sensor that rides on the edge of that uh, rotor for that uh, brushless DC motor. Probably counting the magnetic pulses coming off of it. Maybe looking for RPM or a certain position. I don't know. Let's see. I'm not exactly sure what this motor drives. 
It looks like it's got a brake too that can be pressed against it by this cam right here as it turns. And then you got a, you know, you've got a, uh, this cam is turned by a worm drive which is turned by this regular DC motor over here. There's a lot of, a lot of mechanicals here. A lot of mechanicals. I do not see an encoder, or do I? Yes, I'll bet this. Well, no, probably not. That's probably going to the read-write heads inside. That's probably the magnetics. So I don't really see an encoder on the read-write heads. I was hoping there was an optical encoder. But I don't see one. So, okay. Let's see if I can just get a better look at this motor. And I want to get this circuit board off because it's got a few IC chips on it that I can depopulate too when I'm depopulating circuit boards. If you zoom in a little bit, you can kind of see a little more detail what I'm looking at here. So this is the rotor for a fairly large um, brushless DC motor. Let me see if I can get it out of here. And then once it's out of the way, I should hopefully be able to get that uh, circuit board out of there. There are a lot of gears and pulleys and cams and whatnot in this. These VHS players and recorders were quite complicated beasties back in the day. But really, wow, well, look at that. Look how many poles are on that thing. That's a pretty powerful magnet, too. The screws are sticking to it. Very interesting. Let me, uh, oh. Okay. Oh, that's interesting. Look, this board here drives both of the uh, brushless DC motors. Okay. I wonder if they have to turn at the same RPM. I don't think so. Because I think the tape was going by this thing slower than it was spinning. Because the way it's tilted, see that's how they managed to get so much data on a VHS tape, was uh, because the tape would go by the, uh, the, the read-write head here. The read-write head is tilted, and instead of putting the data on the tape linearly like this, they would put the data on the tape in diagonal slices like that, in diagonal lines. And you could get a lot more data on a piece of tape that way than just running it through linearly. So I suspect this one spun a whole lot faster than this one spun. And what produced the speed difference? I don't know. Ooh. Got into the uh, heat transfer goop there. What produced the speed difference? Maybe just the drivers drove them at different rates, or maybe it's the difference in the number of poles on the motors. I don't know. But uh, that's interesting. Let me cut this off. And then there's probably, oh, and then this board also drove this little motor down here, which turned the little nylon worm gear up there. Okay. Boy, this is a busy little board. This little tiny board drove three different motors. Okay. Oh, well, there's a lot of poles on that thing. I have to count them up. Wow. I don't take apart VCRs very often. I haven't seen stuff like this in a long time. It's kind of interesting. I probably shouldn't keep it. I don't really have a use for it. You know, if it was about mm, yay big, like out of a, uh, a, a washing machine or dryer, I could turn it into a wind turbine. Because these motors make good generators, too. But uh, this is too small for that. Just make a token amount of power. So, really... Not too useful to me. Interesting, but not useful. Um, I will, though, see if I can get this board off. Maybe. It's the engineer in me that's so curious about the way things are put together. You know, if I had 50 of these in front of me to scrap out, you know, and had to have them all done today, I wouldn't be nearly as interested in how they work, just about how to get them apart and get the good stuff out as quick as possible. 
But I've only got the one and another Blu-ray player, and that's it. Ah, so it looks like it's a three-phase motor. Uh, you probably can't see that. We got four wires eh, and thermal transfer goop everywhere. We got four wires and a, a common going down to these coils. So it looks like it was a three-phase motor, probably wired. What's that? Star. Star wired, not delta. Star, since it's got a common. Okay, interesting. Again, no real use for it, unless it was about ten times bigger. All right, but this board, ah, this board has some tiny little, I don't know what those are. What the heck? I don't know, it's got some tiny little components on it. I don't know what they are. And they've just got an E marking on them, or is that a 3? It depends on which way you hold it. I imagine it's actually an E. So I don't know what they are. But, uh, well, it was a lot of trouble to get that little board with two little ICs on it. But, you know what? I got nothing better to do today. I'll put that on the depopulate pile. And is there anything else at all that I want off this board? Another tiny little circuit board here with... That's probably the erase head. As I remember... Boy, it's going back a long time ago. I used to know a lot more about VCRs than I do. You know, you don't use it, you lose it. As I recall, the erase head was separate. And uh, this is probably the erase head here. It's mounted on a little circuit board of its own, but there's really no other components on that board I want, just a capacitor. So I guess that's it. This is all. I don't really want this little DC motor. No use to me. The belts, really no use to me. They're a little better than just rubber bands. So I guess this is all scrap for the metal recycling. Okay, let me uh, clean up the mess a little bit and we'll get the JVC uh, Blu-ray player over here and start on it. Okay, let's start up on this uh, JVC Blu-ray player. It's a few screws here. Looks like the front panel has some clips that hold it on, but let me get these screws out. And we'll see if we can get it apart. Well, well that was easy by comparison to the uh, last one. Uh, steel, very thin, very thin, very light, but steel nonetheless, I can tell. Alright, so that goes the metal recycling. Well, again, you know, we've got um, uh, a Blu-ray player here. Is this a play recorder? It's just a player. It's just a player. Okay. Uh, we got a green logic board and we got a brown power board. And as usual, on the brown board, there's not a lot unless there's some good stuff on the other side, but I doubt it. Seriously. On the other hand, a power board is probably going to be the easiest to remove, so I'll start with it. interesting. Wherever they assembled this thing, they must have some unskilled help issues. Let's get this out. They had a little screw symbol at each of the screw holes, so I guess their people knew where to put the screws. It's not like there were any other holes on the board where they could put them accidentally, or places for them to screw into on the bottom, but... Well, again, this board is brown on one side and green on the other, but the green side has nothing. And the brown side, well, it's got one little IC. It's got what looks like an opto-isolator. got what looks like a bridge rectifier, big diode, small signal transistor, and a big uh, power transistor or MOSFET switch. I'd have to look up the number to know which. So there's not much here. I might, uh, I might go ahead and depopulate it. Does this come out? Yeah, what do you know? They had a, a socket for the power cord. So I might just go ahead and depopulate this anyway, just to get uh, the semiconductors off of it. 
you know, it's not much, but it's better than nothing. I'll put that on the depopulate pile. So let's see about this next board. So we got a cable here that looks like it's running to the front panel. It is not gold plated. Cable here running to the Blu ray player. It is gold plated. Yes. Nice. How about this one? No. So I imagine this goes to the uh, to the reed head. They usually do the gold plating on that. So let me see if I can get this green board out of here. And there's more screws. I'll take out to get it out on the uh, RCA jack connector. Nice heat sink here. I imagine there's a uh, a nice IC chip under it. Oh, I missed a screw. Maybe they put those little screw symbols there for me, so I'd know to take them all out. Let's see. Ah, there's a screw holding the HDMI connector in, too. All right. Get that out. Now it seems to be loose-ish. Something's still holding it. Sure what? Oh. No? Well, I'll take that screw out, but I don't think it goes into the board. No. There we go. Oh, ah, I see. I've run into this problem before. It's the silicone heat transfer pads down here. They were on top of these IC chips. They can be very sticky, and they'll hold the IC chips down. Oh, that's a Broadcom flat pack. I wasn't expecting to find Broadcom stuff in here. It's almost like I've been taking apart telecom equipment. Well, wow. there'll be gold in that chip right there. We've got some fairly big MLCCs, a few other small chips, a couple transistors on this side of the board. This side of the board, we got a couple more chips, a couple more small flat packs, and I want to know what's underneath. I want to know what is underneath this heat sink. I'm hoping it's a nice gold corner BGA, but maybe I'm not that lucky. Let's see. No, it is some sort of. Yes, actually. Nah. It is a Broadcom chip, though, so I bet there's some gold in it, but it's not... You know what, though? It's a flip chip. Flip chips I have bad luck with. There's generally no no gold that I can find in flip chips. It's where they, uh, normally, when they make an IC chip, they will, uh, put the die in the center of the package, and then they will run gold bond wires from all the legs onto the die, onto bond points on the die. Well, somebody somewhere got smart and figured out they could get away from that if they uh, flipped the chips upside down and had the bond points on the dies touch right onto the end of all the legs. The end of the legs will all come into where they need to touch the uh, die. There may be a little tiny dot of gold there, but really it's not enough to even bother with on flip chips. So I was hoping for a nice gold corner BGA, which have lots of gold in them. But no, but still we got uh, one, two, three, four, looks like memory chips, BGA memory chips. And uh, we got another chip here, another chip, chip, uh, crystal. Got some big chunky MLCCs again. Uh, the uh, HDMI connector has gold pins in it, that's nice. Um, there were gold pins inside this connector here that made it with the, uh, the gold fingers on that ribbon cable. So there is some gold to be had here. Another big power transistor over here, or regulator. I'm not sure which. I'd have to look up the number. Another transistor here. Uh, got some gold header pins over here. So there is some, some value to this thing. Not a lot. Nothing to write home about, but you know, nothing to throw away either. Okay, this goes on the uh, depopulate pile. Let's see here. I think I'm going to have to get this front panel off to get the actual Blu-ray player out. And we'll see how that happens. I don't know. Let's 
it's obviously not coming out as easy as I thought it would. It looked like it just had a couple little clips and off it would come, but it's being tenacious. Well, we got a circuit board inside the front panel, a couple of them actually. A small one over here and a long skinny one there. I'll have to have a look at those too. In fact, we'll do that right now. This is just scrap steel from the back. Hope I'm in frame. Yeah. Probably not a lot on this board. I see one little IC chip on it. Oops, broke the board in half because I missed a screw. Yeah, I got some uh, some more surface mount or through hole. Those are through hole push buttons. Little push buttons. Got a little um, one, two, three, four, five digit seven segment display. Probably for time. Hours, minutes, and seconds. Yeah, so time. Got uh, oh, got a USB connector on it with gold fingers in it. That's nice. This end of this cable does not have gold plating on it. I wasn't expecting it to. So not much there. One little IC chip, some gold plating in here. Uh, the seven segment display, LEDs, it's made up of LEDs. LEDs all have a little bit of gold in them. Um, oh, you know what that is? That's the receiver for the remote control. So that's going to have a photo transistor in it. The photo transistor has a little bit of gold in it too. So I might just have to depopulate this board. Again, there's not much here, but uh, I'm not going to throw it away. Might as well get it. Alright, this is the stuff for the recycling here. Steel and plastic. Oh, this other little board, it just has a little push button on it. Nothing much. So, let me get this Blu-ray player out now. Have a look at it. Slightly different from what you get in a computer, but I'm sure inside it's pretty much the same. Let's see. It's coming apart. Looks like it's just held together with clips. Well, it's not held together with clips. It's got little tiny screws, too. So if I take the screws out, maybe the clips will come off. So I want the other end of that gold... Uh, gold-plated ribbon cable, at the very least, and we'll see what else is inside, whether the goodies might be within. Might be a little more electronics in here. Okay, is this screw stripped? It's coming out. There we go. Well, there's the red read right head. And yep, there's gold. There's the other end of the gold ribbon cable. Now, unlike the last one, this is gold on both ends. Nice. Nice little bonus. I'll cut the gold plated ends off, and the next time I'm uh, removing gold plating from stuff, I'll throw these in. I usually uh, treat the stuff with Eco Goldex gold plating stripper um, to take gold plating off things. That's where these will end up. See what we got here. No gold plating. Got a couple more, which I better not gold plated either. Nope. Usually just the read right head. And not always that. Nope. Alright, so there's nothing on this board I want. Nothing on this board I want. And there's really No more electronics here, it looks like. It must have all been on the main board. So again, we got the read-write head in here. Actually, this is just going to be a read head. This is just a Blu-ray player. So we got a little bit of gold in this connector. Actually, that connector's plated all the way on the back down to the board. It's a little unnecessary plating, but that's that's nice. I might have to uh, disassemble this and get that out. Hey, let me look at the other one. The other one, not so generous with the gold plating. So if I was going to go to the trouble of disassembling one of these, 
and taking the read right head out it'd probably be this one because there's some uh, some visible gold plating on the back of this connector so they were a little heavy handed with the gold plating plus I know there's going to be gold a little bit of gold with the uh, laser diode in there and there's another little diode here which uh, I'm not sure what the purpose of it is but there's always two so there might be a little gold bonus so how does this come apart it's all plastic it looks like except for the uh, precision ground rails in there Get this out of the way my pile of piles of scrap steel and scrap plastic are piling up here let's see plastic recycling out on Wednesday I'll have a lot this this week Well, that's actually fairly straightforward. Looks like uh, four screws will take this whole mechanism out. And then this all, actually I may not even have to go to that trouble because it looks like we've got some um, little steel keeper wire in here holding everything together. And if I bet if I just pull that apart without injuring myself, ow. Look at that. There we go. There's that. This can be further disassembled at my leisure. I'll need a really tiny little jeweler screwdriver to get the pieces apart because there's some really tiny screws there. But oh yeah, I see gold plating on the back of the laser diode right there. Okay. And I believe, yeah, this is a focus assembly. I don't know if that's going to show up, but you see how this can move up and down? So there's there's mag electromagnetic focus coils in there for moving this whole lens assembly up and down. I don't know if there's any value to that, but it's kind of interesting. But I do see gold plating. I see gold plating back here, and I know there's, I can see gold plating over here, and I know there's gold plating inside this connector. So since that was so easy to get apart, this is a keeper. Let me look at this one again. This one, this one doesn't look to be so easy to take apart. This one, I don't know, maybe ultrasonically welded together. Yeah, this is, it's all welded together ultrasonically. There's uh, pieces going everywhere here. Oh. Well, that's interesting. This has only got one precision rail. The other side of it rides on just a piece of injection molded plastic. It's got the electromagnetic focusing thing. Let's see, do I see gold? I know there's gold there somewhere. Not always obvious, but I know it's there. This is actually going to be fairly easy to get apart, so maybe I will. that screw out, take that rail out, and there's the whole read-write assembly right there. Alright, so I can take that apart at my leisure because again it's got little tiny screws holding it together. Okay, the rest of this stuff can go in the recycling. There's nothing else I want. Alright, let me clean up the mess and we'll go over what I got. Okay, here's all the stuff I am keeping out of those two units. Not a whole lot. and In fact, I'm not really keeping it I'm going to depopulate these boards. These are the two good boards right here. They've got a fair number of IC chips on them, and the IC chips all contain gold. You know, there's other components on here that are interesting. There's transistors and uh, whatnot. So there's crystal. Um, there's uh, this has a HDMI connector with gold-plated pins in it. Um, this connector here has gold-plated pins in it. None of those connectors were had gold-plated pins in them, so... But uh, still, these are the two really good boards. These other boards are only okay. Um, I will harvest all of the transistors off of this brown board here. Yeah, into the goo again. Uh, all the transistors, uh, quartz crystal, LEDs, and uh, there's the one IC chip on it, and... Yeah, there's a few ICs on the other side. I'll harvest all that off of it. 
Uh, don't really think I need anything else here. We got lots of RCA connectors. Got, uh, looks like a uh, tuner or an RF modulator. I am not sure which, but you know, not too useful these days. Analog TV is dead, so uh, don't need that. Uh, a few infrared LEDs. I'm, I'll harvest them because they've got gold in them. Uh, other stuff here. I got two read-write heads from the Blu-ray players. Um, this one has a fair amount of gold on it. This one has at least a little bit of gold on it that I can see. So I will get that. Uh, power boards here have a few interesting components on them. I'll harvest mainly the transistors and what few IC chips there are between them. Got a Nice uh, extruded aluminum heat sink, kind of heavy, so that'll go on the heat sink pile. Always nice to get some more aluminum. Got uh, this little board here has a USB connector with gold plated pins in it. I got uh, lots of little through hole push buttons, which I need for another project. My retro computing, which I'm getting into, there'll be videos about that. Um, the uh, seven segment display over here, the five digit seven segment display, I'll harvest that because that's got gold. Um, wires in it. A um, couple of power cords. I guess that's about it. Got this little motor driver board here which was more trouble really than it was worth to harvest but since I got it off I'll take those chips off of it. I'll depopulate it. Plus I got the uh, the ribbon cables with the gold plated ends. This one is gold plated on both ends. This one's only gold plated on one end but still gold plated. A little bit of a bonus. Okay, so that's about it. I was hoping this would be a quick and short video. Turned out to be a little longer than I thought. I hope you've uh, stayed with me through it. Thanks for watching if you have. Give the video a thumbs up, a like if you uh, found this at all interesting or educational or just killed a little time during COVID lockdown. Subscribe to see future videos and be on the lookout. I've got a lot of videos coming. I've got some more telecom equipment I need to scrap out. I've got my um, Where's the Gold in E-Waste series that's coming out starting out with transistors and we got a lot of them here um, and we'll move on to IC chips and connectors and other things um, it's going to be like obvious gold and non-obvious gold because a lot of people look at a board like this there's no gold on that board and I look at this board and I say oh there's gold here there's gold here there's gold over here there's gold over here 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 you know so there's obvious gold and there's not obvious gold so that's coming out so, uh, like I said, subscribe to see future videos. Press the little bell icon so you'll be notified when they come out. And uh, have a good day. Thanks for watching. Bye.